Welcome to Mindless Entertainment. My name is Jesse Milestone, and today I have a few little exciting tidbits that I picked up from, you know, just living in Los Angeles and meeting people who work in cool places in Los Angeles. Um, so you guys have probably, I've, we've all heard about John Favreau's uh, show, and, and some things are known about it right now. So the things that the, gen the general public knows about this upcoming show is that it's set three years after the end of Return of the Jedi, um, that it's going to deal with a bunch of new characters, we're not going to be seeing old characters, etc., uh, that it could come out as early as next fall, that shooting could start as early as this fall, that John Favreau has already completed, uh, he says, half the script, which I assume means half the season, um, and he's already starting to lock down his, his production and his creative team. So things are moving really quickly and very ahead of schedule. Um, very much so, since this guy is definitively, definitely on location, and by location, I mean on, not location, on studio, at, at the studio, looking at, getting deep into this, into the art artistic design here. Uh, and I know this because, bumped into somebody, happened to show me a picture on his phone of Jon Favreau standing with a suit of Mandalorian armor. Was there a person in the suit? I'm not sure. But, um... This, from, from from the information that I was able to glean from this picture and from what he's telling me, I think we can definitely expect at least one solid, important Mandalorian character in Jon Favreau's uh, upcoming series, which is super exciting. Um, I can't wait to see that. I can't wait to see what he does with this. I'm, I am think he's a really fun, really brilliant kind of dude, and um, I think that he knows how to surround himself with good people. So I'm excited to see what, he do, what he's going to do with that. I'm excited to see, uh, to get a little deeper into the Mandalorians and some live action stuff, because let's face it, I mean, animated is all fine and good, but a but actual suit of Mandalorian battle armor is pretty freaking badass. So very excited for that. Um, the other thing that I, that I learned from him, from him and the people that he works with, you know, tooling around, I don't know if he ran into Connie Kennedy. Yes, Connie Kennedy. Did you guys know Kathleen is a twin sister? She does. So I don't know if they bumped into her, um, you know, in Burbank at Disney, or she has her own, she has a, a virtual production company as, uh, as well. But, um, they have, they have met her, they've encountered her and, and, and their take is you would never believe that they're twins because, and they do look alike. If you look at, they do look basically the same, except, and he says, when you, when you bump into Connie, she is so smiley. She's so friendly. She's just the happiest. She just exudes happiness. She's, she's the nicest person. And in contrast, Kathleen Kennedy is a storm cloud. Uh, these guys, they don't work directly with her or report directly to her, but they avoid her like the plague when they can. There's just, whenever she walks into the room, it's just this somber, serious sort of people are on edge. People don't feel, she doesn't make people feel comfortable. She doesn't make people feel happy. She makes them feel scared and intimidated. So uh, if that's the type of environment we're dealing with at Lucasfilms, you can understand why, why things have happened the way they have. You can understand why people are, are lashing out at fans and, and taking their anger and frustration out. They're under, they're under an evil warlord. I mean, that's, this is some of the most definitive proof I've ever, I've, I've heard from someone directly to speak to the content of her character and the quality of her leadership. Um, and, and when you have somebody like that, when you have uh, oppressive leadership, you get bad things. I mean, you get bad, bad product. You get people who are unhappy doing their jobs so they don't do them while they don't perform as well. And they do things like go and lash out at the fans because they can't lash out at work. They can't express themselves in their workplace. They can't live up to their full potential because they have an evil, evil overlord they have to report to. So I wanted to share that with you. I thought that was kind of some, some fun little, uh, little, little tidbits that were really fascinating to just get to hear firsthand. And, uh, yeah, I want to share them with all, all, with all you because you guys deserve it. Um, I may even put up more than one video a day for the next little bit of time because I just have so much to talk to you about and there's just only so much time. But anyway, that's what I want to share with you today. Um, maybe share more stuff with you later. I got a t-shirt. I got two t-shirts. They're great. You should check them out. Uh, if you uh, haven't checked out my Patreon, it's a fun, great, fun community. Another way to, you know, be more involved in this whole wonderful thing that is Mindless Entertainment. And I'm popping up on Geeks and Gamers all the time as well. So make sure you tune in there. Not going to be on the High Council this week. They're having Doomcock on because, uh, you know, other people need a chance as well but uh, I will most likely be back the following week when it's hosted on Geeks and Gamers so yeah that's all I love you guys talk to you soon <laughs>